Well, so what are you working on now? Um, well, you know, I, I uh, do lots of different things. Um, in, as an actor, I'm working on a show for Amazon um, called Salem Rogers. It's a brand new half-hour comedy. Um, just came out last week, I think, as a pilot, and it's being voted on right now, and uh, we'll see whether that goes or not. I play a very outlandish, outrageously gay agent in that show, um, which is really fun for me. Absolutely. I haven't really yes. done anything like that before. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking around for my next big gig, and uh, either on television or movies. I've got a few movies that are in the can right now that are being edited, and hopefully will come out. They're independents, so, you know, you never know with an independent film whether it's going to come out or not. But these are movies that I have high hopes for. One never knows. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of a gamble. Um, yes, it is. How did you get Mad Men and L.A. Law? What's the process of that for anyone watching this who wants to be an actor? Well, you know, I decided when I, when I decided to become an actor, when I decided that that was going to be the direction that I was going to go in, I, you know, I, I came from a very conservative family. And no one in my family was in the arts. No one was, and I definitely no one was in, in, in the acting field or had anything to do with mm -hmm. Hollywood. Um, and I, I, uh, when I, much to my parents' chagrin, I told them I was going to do this for a living, and they said, well, you'll never make a living doing it, you know, and so we're going to have to be supporting you for the rest of, of your life, and my brother was the same way, and, and, uh, and so I, I said, well, okay, I'm, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right, and um, I wanted to get educated in, in drama, and I wanted to get the best education I could get, and I wanted to study acting, and I wanted to study acting in the best place I could, in the country. And that ended up being the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco, which at the time, in the 70s, was considered the best school in the country. It was the most comprehensive school. We had a big professional theater. How did you get into something like that? Is it um, about money, or do you have to really rehearse or get Well, money? I mean, uh, that's an interesting story, actually. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, especially if your parents are against it, if they were going to pay the bill, I'm sure it was expensive at the time. Well, the uh, I, when I went to Yale, uh, I actually I had started out at Berkeley, and uh, I was actually kind of kicked out of Berkeley in my sophomore year. Uh, not officially kicked out, but I was asked to leave Berkeley. I was accused of running a brothel in Berkeley. Uh, which was completely untrue, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, There's your legacy. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, the, uh, I, when, I, when I went to Berkeley, uh, I, I saw my dorm room when I first arrived, and the dorm room was a little cinder block room with four bunk beds in it, and, and I just said, I can't, I, I can't do it. I can't live on, you know, on campus like this. And I, I said, well, I'll, I'll go out and I'll find a, a room for rent somewhere, you know. And, um, and I question sometimes how I got into Berkeley with, you know, the kind of mind that would go to like, well, I can find a room for rent in mm -hmm. Berkeley on the first day of school when 40,000 kids have just come into the city. I, like, is there going to be even a closet for rent at that right, point? Right, right. Um, but I thought, well, it didn't even occur to me that I wouldn't, you know, that it would be almost impossible to find something. So I was just walked out of the dorm and I started walking around Berkeley up and down the streets looking for a for rent sign. And at the end of the day, I, uh, I finally came upon this beautiful Tudor house, uh, the corner of Piedmont and Bancroft, with a big for rent sign in the front door. And uh, I went, wow, my lucky day. And I, I knocked on the door and a uh, uh, guy with hair down to here came to the door and asked me who I was. I told him and he said, yeah, I got a room for you. Um, and he took me inside, and sure enough, you know, I had a room in this place, and my roommate turned out to be a heroin addict, but I had a room in this place. And it, it was a fraternity house that had become more like a, um, a vegetarian commune, 
because 1970 in Berkeley, there really yes. weren't any fraternities. So the houses were still there, and they still had Greek letters on the front door. In this case, the Greek letters were covered over by the Ferenc sign, so I didn't see the Greek letters when I rented the room. But I found out, not long after that, that I was living in a fraternity house. But the fraternity house, as I said, wasn't really a fraternity house. It was all hippies, and the second floor was all girls. Um, because there weren't enough guys who were quote-unquote pledging. That was, that was not even happening mm -hmm. in Berkeley at the time. But, and they just still needed to rent the rooms. They still needed to pay the rent. So they rented out the rooms to whomever they could, and it turned out that the whole second floor was rented out to girls. Um, so we had girls and boys living in the fraternity house. We had the best grades of any fraternity in Berkeley because we had the girls there, and the girls were very studious. Um, my freshman year, I lived there without any strange things going on. And then in the second year, my sophomore year, I was the least stoned person of anyone living in the house and considered the most responsible person of anyone living in the house. So the management of the house came to me and I was asked to be the manager, which meant that I collected the rent, which meant that I made sure there was toilet paper and light bulbs, etc. Um, but it also meant that when we sent our paperwork into the university uh, every quarter, I was the president of the fraternity. Um, and when we put in the names of all the constituents, we, if it was yes. a, a girl's name was like Andrea, we just put A, you know, for the for we just put her initials. So they didn't know there were girls. They just knew we had a high grade point average and they knew that I was the president. All good, everything was fine, until we had a fire in the spring of my sophomore year and at three o'clock in the morning, the fire department came. And the Berkeley Daily Gazette, the paper came, and the fire department was plucking girls off the second floor roof in their nightgowns, which the newspaper said, what's wrong with this picture? Fraternity house. Right. Girls, three o'clock in the morning, nightgowns, and it went out into the press that I was running a house of ill repute because I was the president of the house and there were girls living there. And uh, so the dean called me in and he told me that Reagan, who was the governor at the time, mm -hmm. had gotten wind of this and that because he was head of the Board of Regents being the governor of California, of the University of California, he had already called Berkeley the hot, a hotbed of sexual uh, depravity and a drug den and whatever. And, he didn't like the fact that the Delta Cap Epsilon house was actually a house of ill repute. And so the dean said to me that I had to kick all the girls out. I had to allow an inspection by the university. I had to write a letter of apology to the governor and a letter of apology to the fraternity. All of which I said no to. And I told him to go stick it. <laughs> I went back.